second video in our series on fire suppression systems will focus on valves. Valves that control the flow of water to fire suppression systems must be in compliance with two requirements. First, they must indicate whether the valve is open, closed, or somewhere in between. Second, they must be supervised, that is, Closing a valve will actuate a tamper switch which will initiate a supervisory signal on a fire alarm control panel. Here you see a young fella closing an outside stem and yoke valve, an OSNY. An OSNY indicates that it is fully open when its rising stem is fully extended. Here this OSNY has no stem showing. Not a good sign, considering that it shuts down the flow to sprinklers to the building on the right. Here, OS and Ys controlling the flow to the sprinkler risers are chained shut, and more than likely will remain shut until discovered by an observant fire company or fire prevention inspector. This is a post indicator valve, a PIV. PIVs control the flow of water and underground piping to supply a fire suppression system. PIVs have a window that indicates whether they are opened or closed. PIVs are operated with a wrench that is typically secured with a padlock. At a fire, although the indicating valve indicates that the valve is open, always give it a little tug because it may not be completely open. Again, on the post indicator valve. Although the window may say that the valve is open, give it a tug, make sure the valve is completely open. These are WPIVs, wall post indicator valves. WPIVs operate valves, in this case sprinkler risers, that are located immediately inside the exterior wall. Similar to PIVs, WPIVs have a window which provides exterior indication whether they are open or closed. Here we see a butterfly valve. When the indicator is vertical, in line with the flow of water, so is the butterfly. When the indicator and butterfly move in unison to the horizontal position across the flow of water, it indicates that the valve is closed. As this OS and Y is closed, the valve's tamper switch will initiate a supervisory alarm indicated by a yellow light on the fire alarm control panel and the words supervisory valve tamper on its display screen. Now we will focus our attention on standpipe fire hose outlet valves. There are two basic types of hose outlet valves, conventional on the left and pressure reducing on the right. The most reliable indicator that distinguishes a conventional valve from a pressure reducing valve is their valve stem. Conventional valves, again the one on the left, has a threaded valve stem, whereas the pressure reducing valves, or PRVs, have a smooth stem. NFPA 14, the standard for standpipes, required buildings built before 1993 to have a minimum hose outlet flow pressure of 65 psi and a maximum flow pressure of 100 psi. If the system pressure did not exceed 175, simply restricting the amount of water flowing accomplishes the required pressure reduction. Pressure restricting devices, PRDs, reduce flow pressure in one of two ways. One, restrict the size of the outlet. Two, limit how much the valve can be opened. This disc that can be removed restricts the flow. This relic is an adjustable vein device that also reduces flow to keep the outlet flow pressure in a pre-1993 building from exceeding 100 psi. This PRD reduces flow pressure by limiting how much the valve can be opened. It is easily removed with an Allen wrench. Similarly, this conventional valve is equipped with a pressure reducing device that can be easily circumvented, removed, and allowed the valve to open completely. Again, do not confuse PRDs, pressure restricting devices, with PRVs, pressure reducing valves, which will be examined in the next video.